Hello everybody, TB back here again, uh, finishing up about the talk of shelters and such. Um, a wiki up, I'm, I, I'm not a very good artist, but I, maybe you'd be able to see this. This is a tripod, it's tied together up at the top by three and spread out the legs like a tripod. And then uh, you stack your debris on it. Let me draw a little more of what I was talking about. You can put one across the middle here or two across the middle poles to tie in around all the way around with or vines is best. You can take vines to tie the poles on. And then uh, at the bottom, if you want to, you can run a pole across the bottom to keep it spread apart. And uh, for as uh, worrying about it turning over, it takes a pretty good wind to blow that wiki over once you stack all that weight on there. I'm talking four to five feet thick uh, of debris. What you're going to do on the back side, or what I do on the back side, I take and weave that those poles through the ones I've tied on there. See that? Just a second. You run them right through there and through there, it just leap, just weaving it together up and down is the way I do it. And then when I get to the last part, I look up a bunch of uh, dense bark off of trees that has, uh, I don't know how to, uh, the, um, I'll think of it in a minute, algae or moss. Moss is the word I'm looking for. Alright, it'll have moss on it, and that moss will act like a natural water, watershed, and the water will run off the back and off the sides of your tripod of the wiki. Now, after you, and if you want a soft bed in the winter time, I wouldn't suggest using leaves in the summer because there is insects, may stuff in the in the leaves that might bother you. Uh, but in the winter time or fall, when there's the bugs are already in dormant, the leaves are fine to use. Makes a wonderful bed, in my opinion. Uh, or if you don't want to use leaves and you have a good bed, you can take your rocks. Yeah, yeah, flat rocks, and you got you a fire pit. And what I do, uh, you know, I was talking about putting a shelter on the front of the tripod for your for your uh, hearth for your fireplace. And you get some rocks, and this is a fire pit right here. And it, once you make your uh, you, you tie you some poles here together and two in front of your wiki up. I'm not a very good artist, but this would be on the front of this, this on the front of this, tied into those poles. And that gives you like a front porch like thing uh, over it. And you've stacked debris on top of it too. Like a bunch of leaves, a bunch of brush and stuff. But down here, the only thing is you want to make sure it's high enough and your fire is, is not too high to get into that, to the leaves or the brush. Or you might not even use leaves, just use the brush. Uh, tree limbs, in other words, you know, if preferably green tree limbs if you can cut them or sprouts to go across there because green won't burn. Dead wood will. And especially these uprights here and here in front in your poles should be green in my opinion in order to hold your shelter up good and strong. But for us worrying about it blowing over, well a high wind might blow it over, a tornado or something like that is possible. But nevertheless this is what I'm talking about. Uh, on a wiki up, and this is just a shed on the front of it, but it would be up here if you, I'm just not an artist. What I'm saying, I know that's funky. Now on, if you want a hot bed in the winter, you can take flat sand rocks, put them in the fire where you're cooking, and whenever the fire dies down, break the rocks out of it, and, and dig you a pit in there where you're going to sleep. Now here's the the part you want to know. You want to rake them rocks in there and lay them flat under you where you're going to be sleeping, down in the ground. Cover them with dirt good. At least an inch, inch and a half of dirt over them. Maybe two inches. It, it wouldn't hurt. Uh, to keep it from getting your bed on fire because those rocks are going to be cherry red when they come out of that fire. Be sure you don't use wet rocks or out of any water, any rocks with moisture in them. They'll blow up on you. Be sure and get dry rocks if you're going to heat rocks for a bed. Don't use wet rocks. Wreck, uh, wet stone will blow up and hurt you. Can't, it could hurt you bad. But dry rocks, if in the dry weather, gather you some, keep them in the house where they're going to be dry, and then you can use those dry stones. Don't lay If you can keep from it, don't lay them right on the ground. Put some leaves between the ground or some type of 
of uh, something to keep your, your rocks dry, is what I'm saying, up off the ground, when they're not in use so that moisture don't get in the rocks. And then you can heat them, like I said, without killing yourself, without blowing yourself up. Don't get rocks near a creek. Creeks, uh, rocks near creeks always have a lot of moisture. They can blow up on you, so folks be careful. But when heating rocks. But when they come out of that fire, they're going to be cherry red, so you're going to either have to have a hole or a stick or something to drag them over there and put them in your pit and lay them flat so they're comfortable. Then put your dirt over the top of them, at least an inch and a, inch, inch and a half of dirt, maybe two inches. Cover them up good because you don't want to get your bedding on fire or your butt on fire because it could, especially if you're using sleeping bags or leaves over it. I wouldn't put leaves over it if you're going to do this. I would just use your sleeping bag over the top of that, over the top of that, uh, over the top of that dirt bed, and that will keep you warm all night. That's just one way to do it. Uh, watch Cody and uh, Dave. They have something that I like better than what I do there. It's called a solar, kind of like a solar uh, heating shelter. And they did it one night using Bizqueen, and that and old da uh, old Cody said, "You'll be warm, Dave, or your money back." <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I really liked the shelter they created. It was out of a kind of a, I think it was plastic or maybe it was one of the space blankets. I, I'm not sure. It was just one of them shows they had up there on their dual survivor. And what it was, it, it was a solar shelter and, and, and he built a fire. Now there's, there's the master of fires, I believe, is Cody. If Cody can't build a fire, I don't think there's nobody can get a fire going unless it's, if Cody can't do it, nobody can. Because I've seen him build fire out of wet stuff that I could, I would have been cursing about. Couldn't have got to go. <laughs> Sometimes I saw nights like that. You couldn't get a fire for nothing. Needed it bad. There you was freezing your A off all night. Because you couldn't get a fire. And there you are out there with nothing. But fire is very important in cold weather or damp weather. And a fire can also keep varmints away. Especially if you're in the swamps. Keep snakes back, it keeps jaguars back, uh, you know, mountain lions such as that. Even bears won't, don't want to, animals won't fool with fire too much if you got a good fire going. It, they, it kind of gives you a, well, it, they could come in and get you anyway, but usually don't. The fire keeps them at bay. In other words, it helps to keep the animal back because they don't like to be burned. They know that's hot and they, they don't like to be in the light. They want to get you snagged before you see them. That's the way a bear is. He's a stalker, especially the, the grizzly kind that stalks a man. Once he tastes flesh, he's going to be on you for life. He's going to be after human flesh permanent. Well, I better hop off here with that being said because uh, my battery is sure looks like it's getting a little low uh, or something there. I'm not sure what it's saying, but anyhow, it's got a half moon. I don't know what that means, but I better shut her down. Okay. I just wanted to show you how what a wiki up is. It's a lot of debris. And on the outside of that wiki up you would want to get you some bark if you can find it. Big slabs of bark. It don't have to be any particular length. You're not building an agricultured house here. You're just trying to get you some shelter to keep the rain and the snow off of you. That's what that's for. Also in the snow, you could build you a snow cave, but it takes a lot of energy to build one. If you're going to be there a few days, a snow cave is perfect. You just you just pile you up some snow, a big mound, and keep it as big as you want, and you pack it down good so it won't cave in on you. And on the south side, there again, I'd put it on the south side, your door, and I'd start digging you a tunnel out in there and dig the inside of the, the uh, snow cave out. And you'll and it'll keep you warm, keep you from freezing to death in the winter. Another way you can keep warm in the cold, and I'm going to tell you this may gross you, or may, you might not like what I'm about to say, but you can if you uh, find a dead animal that that is already in the winter time, he's frozen, he won't stink too bad. You can skin his hide out and sleep in his skin. His hide will keep you warm all night. It's better than nothing. A bear. Uh, elk, a moose, uh, any big game hide and roll up in. At least wise it'll give you some shelter and it will keep your body warm. That, that, and uh, I have also seen some of them Eskimos up in Alaska and they were, their hands were freezing from frostbite. I've seen them to warm their hands up. There.